Hello, I am here with members of the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders, and we have a larger group that we have been meeting for the past several days to discuss words that we have felt are false and false prophetic words. And I'm just going to read the document that many of us have worked on. And then we're going to ask Ashley Bishop Hammond to start as he's really our elder in this. And then we'll just have various leaders comment briefly. But I think that the, the document itself, which we're going to also put on, um, on this particular uh, word that we're issuing will also be available to you. Statement from the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders concerning false prophetic words targeting President Donald Trump and America. 1 Corinthians 14, 29, I'm reading from the Amplified, that two or three persons speak is inspired by the Holy Spirit, while the rest pay attention and weigh carefully what is said. The Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders ACPE is a group of 60 seasoned prophets who've been meeting for 25 years. Several of the names in this document are pioneers of the modern day prophetic movement. The ACPE was initially convened after several questionable national level words were released, prophetic words that caused great confusion with the body of Christ. As the Council of Prophetic Elders, our intent remains to hear the word of the Lord together and seek God's wisdom to apply 1 Corinthians 4.29. When a questionable word is issued that could bring fear or confusion, neither of which God authors. It is for this purpose that we write this statement. While we hear various words that seem questionable at best come out, we have never publicly called out a prophetic word as false in our 25-year history. However, when what is issued is so flagrantly false and carries the potential to incite violence and cause division in the name of God, we feel we must denounce it such as a group. Further, there's a clear pattern of disturbing false prophecies being released by a minister who many identify as a prophet. These prophecies are being released to a global audience via social media. Since these harmful words were publicly released to a global audience, we feel they require a public response. We will present them one by one. Number one, the God punched Trump prophecy. On November 4th, 2024, Election Day Eve in the U.S., a prophetic word regarding Trump's presidency was issued by this minister. At this time, we're not going to call the name, and hopefully we hope that this will cause a, a repentance and a retraction. Additionally, on November 5th, 2024, Election Day, the same minister released a separate word uh, connecting a Trump pre uh, con saying that a Trump presidency with God's judgment will be God's judgment on the people of America. God punched, this is the word, God punched a Donald Trump in the face and his teeth came out and there was a lot of blood. And that was quite symbolic of what he represented. The word of the Lord is this, that there would be a catastrophic time of him, Trump's leading, and that he would be removed by God because he'd become the champion of himself. And then Trump fell over his own partnership, uh, fell over his own partnership with unredeemed sex, power, and unredeemed money that opened the door of all sorts of evil to be released through him. Uh, number two, the Trump presidency being God's judgment. Excerpt from number 5th, 2024. During the broadcast, it was also strongly inferred that prayer would not change the outcome of these words. They were settled. We, referring to the minister and their team, believe that Trump is going to be a judgment of God on the people of God. A judgment on the people of God. Number three, the, Levi the Leviathan released because of Trump prophecy. Because of Trump. Uh, other words from within this minister's group have been issued during this time saying a seven-headed Leviathan had been released across the world and brought chaos because of Trump. We also judge this to be a false prophecy that is based out of a political bias and hatred of President Trump's, Trump stemming from a political worldview that differs from his conservative stances. Other quote-unquote prophetic revelations and declarations presented in the same media broadcast were also concerning to us, but we will not specifically address them at this time. Number four, the judging of the American church prophecy. 
In addition to the God punch Trump statement, this same minister has also written and spoken on other occasions, declaring that the Church of America has exchanged spiritual power for political power. While this might be the case in some instances, no one we know has done that. Secondly, the inference that the American church doesn't need Jesus now because they have Trump is also false. The church and movements that we know of, and there are many, understand that Trump is only human and God reigns supreme. Trump is not God, and we are not glorifying him as such. However, we also know that this election was not only a national election, but carries a global impact. In other words, the election had implications that ripple throughout nations. Hundreds of thousands of people in the world understand the consequences of electing leaders who are for late-term abortion, gender transitioning of children paid with taxpayer money, and other anti-biblical positions. Number five, another word, the tyranny and the fall of democracy in America. This was by far the most concerning. This was given November 8th, 2024. The Lord says, USA, the days of your greatest instability in your history are here and are now. The Lord says, lawlessness, America, has been released upon your shores and there will be chaos. There will be loss of life. There will be riots. There will be culmination. This is the culmination of years. And the Lord says, you will see in the natural realm of Romans chapter one, where there's a giving over to tyranny and giving over to lawlessness, a giving over to the full force of the moral rot. God is pressuring and allowing a pressurization to come into nations where democracy doesn't work. Democracy is about to not hold. Democracy is about to fall. It is about to become not the solution that it's been for many decades. Some of the economic structure is going to fail and fold as God starts to say, I will provoke you and your citizens to call upon my name. The ACP judges these words as false. Our concerns are as follows. We believe these words are not inspired by the Holy Spirit and fail to pass the scriptural test for discerning the New Testament prophetic words. And we give scripture for this. We believe the words represent harmful curses. We believe the words have acted upon those who are immature and unstable could incite violent actions against the president of the United States. Um, uh, and we have 1 Kings 21 regarding Jezebel and Naboth's vineyard, illustrating how an evil word when spoken and acted upon can come to pass and bring about severe and fatal consequences. We believe these words can produce a corporate agreement in a demonic plot, giving the enemy a landing strip and the power to fulfill that curse thus bringing it to pass. 1 Corinthians 13 strongly admonishes us to operate out of love. It is sandwiched between 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. The words in question do not reflect love. Taking the Matthew 18 approach, according with Matthew 18, we've approached some of these uh, prophetic voices with our concerns about these words. We ask them to retract these presumption, presumptive and dangerous words which we have deemed have been prompted out of the wrong spirit. So far, they do not seem, there does not seem to be any willingness to listen to the counsel of voices that this person not long ago considered to be mothers and fathers in their lives. Our desire was to address these issues privately and hope for a resolution that would bring healing to the person of the body of Christ. Unfortunately, those efforts have not yielded fruit. Due to the serious nature of the words being shared publicly and how they could be used, to either release a curse they may unwittingly agree with or even aspire one to fulfill its violent rhetoric. We felt it important to make a public statement about our views on these public proclamations. We had hoped that there would be at least an acknowledgement that it was not wise to release these words publicly, but rather to submit them to mature oversight and perhaps intercession. We're deeply concerned by the, for the members of the body of Christ who've been hurt confused and jarred by the counsel of the word and the dogmatic tone in which it was delivered. As a result of this grievous concern and our deep love for this ministry and those who heard the word, the Holy Spirit directed us to issue this statement in humility and the fear of the Lord, we do so. Speaking the truth in love, we love the prophetic and believe it has the potential to bring God's purpose into the earth like nothing else can, but we are also jealous for its integrity, zealous 
and ministry in the pure and ministered in proper protocol and wisdom. We're praying for those involved in releasing these controversies on detrimental words. Hope they will move in a rightful and mature way to heal the land and not speak division and destruction. We love them, pray for them, and believe God will move in their lives. And then we give a prayer at the end. And this document, I know I've read a lot right now, but will be available to you. And it is our hope that as a result of this, these words will be retracted. And we encourage people, before you release a word that says that, like this word said, that this cannot be changed. In other words, by saying this, okay, one could have said, oh, I'm seeing some terrible things that could happen. We need to pray. We need to call on God. So the spirit of the person was wrong. And and uh, uh, we believe even, you know, not operating out of the heart of God. Uh, there have been many prophetic voices that have warned we need to pray for America, that there could be rioting. We are not ignorant of this fact. In fact, you don't have to be a prophet to know that that, that could happen. However, to speak such words of judgment without even a call to prayer and just and uh, it's very concerning and when we ask who did you have these words judged by it was by their own community rather than reaching out and so we want to go right now to Bishop Bill Hammond why are we starting with him because we consider him the father of the modern day prophetic movement he has seen everything whenever i i need to know something i call him and i'll say oh yeah and 59 you know this happened or you know oh yeah we're are they talking about that again so anyway bishop hammond will you share with us yes amen well you know i was just reading matthew 24 where jesus said in the last days many false prophets will arise and and they would deceive many, and many would lose their love and commitment to God and be confused. The only thing he didn't do is tell us how to handle it, for sure, <laughs> <laughs> and what we should do. But over in Deuteronomy, it does give us some idea of 13. I, I ran across this back in 1963. I had to deal with some false doctrine and teach it. And I said, God, what's the answer here? And he said in chapter 13 of Deuteronomy, he says, if a prophet arises among you or a dreamer of dreams and gives you a sign or wonder and the sign or the wonder for, uh, he foretells to you comes to pass. Now, every, all of the other people that don't know the prophetic was which God came to pass. No, that doesn't mean so. And it, he says, let us go after other gods and uh, you have not spoken and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or to that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and your entire being. And uh, <clears throat> so to me, I judge prophecy by the spirit of wisdom. James 1, James 3 talks about the wisdom of God. And, and I, I judge the word could be somewhat right or wrong, but the spirit behind it tells you whether the words are more accurate or not. And uh, uh, let me, uh, James, let me see if I got here, James, let me just read that right quickly to you. This is in the Amplified. Uh, it says here that, but, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure, undefiled, then it is peace-loving, uh, it's uh, courteous, considerate, a gentle, it is willing to yield to reason, full of compassion and good fruits. It is wholeheartedly and straight forward, impartial and unfe un uh, un unfettered, fain on vain. These the, the three from doubts, wavering and insincerity. And... Um, we've done lots of teaching and training on the prophetic and prophets and personal prophecy, but we are living in the last days and there are many arising and a lot of people don't know how to discern prophecy, how to determine. And here Deuteronomy says, they can give you a word or a dream and it comes to pass, but doesn't mean it's God 
because it says the Lord your God is testing you to see whether you want to believe a lie or believe something that's in your heart. Just like these prophecies, uh, some of them want to believe Trump's a bad guy. They want to believe America's going to go down the drain because they're from other nations and some in our own nation uh, feel that way. So you can prophesy presumptuously out of your own desires. And I, for 15 years, I wouldn't prophesy to any of my family or close people because I was too emotionally involved. We talk about mindsets and soul blockage, which you, if, you're, if you're too emotionally involved in something or you have a strong opinion, you shouldn't be doing prophesying about that because you, if you don't know how to separate your emotions, your spirit, your feelings, your thinking, and otherwise, just like people prophesy the end times according to their eschatology. And, and we need to realize that uh, prophecy is for, so serious. It's, it's about to explode like never before. But right now, the devil's throwing up a front, trying to confuse the issue, and et cetera. I think it would be good even to read all of these names, let people know who you're talking about, that if we're going to sign it, they might as well know it's not just you and two, three others that are doing this like the false prophecy is. And we need to realize that these are the days that Jesus prophesied about. We're living in them, and now we've got to work them through them. And I wish he had to give us, so if he, somebody rises as a false prophet, do this, 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 the other. And it says it from among you. So it's, we know if, when, if somebody from Muslim or uh, from some other religion prophesies something, then we know it's false. But what, you, what about born-again, spirit-filled Christians that are supposed to be present truth, reality, and all of that. And how you discern that? And you have to discern it by pretty well the, the person. How I, are they involved in this? Do they have an opinion about this? Is, is this in their heart? Do they have soul blockage or mindset? And, uh, and then, then, then how did they give it? Did they give it with a spirit of meekness? And, 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 and if confronted, are they teachable? Uh, it's what the Bible says. Uh, are they teachable? Are they instructable? Uh, do they respond with uh, with uh, reason and logic and solid uh, humanitarian uh, situations? So uh, we, we've got situations here on our hands, but uh, we, it's never been this serious before. You know, we started the ACPE in 1999 because of a prophecy going out by one prophet among us that said to what they say, blood's going to be running in the streets, there's going to be wars all over the United States. Well, when a prophecy concerns a whole nation and concerns a lot of people, it needs to be judged or evaluated and dealt with. And so we started the ACPE, you and I, and a few, several others. And uh, this is the first time we've had a major situation that we've got to deal with since we originally started it. There's been a lot of things come up, but now... Uh, we just have to bite the bullet and take to, and take our responsibility and expose it because a lot of souls are going to be de deceived and manipulated and, and they don't know how to handle prophecy just like they did in 2020. So we, we need to really uh, take a stand and we are taking a stand and say, okay, if you need a, if you need a second opinion or if you need a balance to this, here's what we're saying, here's what we're doing. And they, then according to your heart, you'll make a choice. We can't make people believe. We can't make people prophesy true, but we can give the, other, the innocent people a chance to evaluate and it, it determine what's God, what's not God. So I believe this is a very good idea to make a presentation. We don't like to do it. We don't have to get out there because the devil will use it for his own purposes too. But I believe there'll be a lot of people saved from delusion and from believing. Of course, if many would grow cold and lose heart and forsake the ministry and forsake thing because of false prophecy. So we, we're going to believe God that this is going to work and the heirs to hear what the spirit has to say and, and they will have a balance. But we give them a chance to see the difference and, and see the balance and give them hope and give them something. Otherwise, they don't they don't have anything to work with, nothing to some people out there don't have any prophets around them. They've don't heard, heard of it. So they don't know how to judge it, how to relate to it, what to think about it. So that's our responsibility to, as prophets and as prophetic movement to establish it, make it known. And then we just have to take the stand and take the static that will come from it.
Well, thank you, Bishop. And we're not saying this person is a false prophet. And we hope that even uh, they will become teachable and um, and listen and heed. And we hope so. We hope so, because uh, we are trying to extend mercy. And, uh, you know, we know not everyone will re know who this is and want us to say. But at this point, we're just judging the words himself. Uh, Tom or Jane Hammond, either one, if you want to share. Yeah, you know, uh, we teach a lot out of Ephesians 1, where it talks about uh, Paul prayed a prayer, let the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ be released. And that's really where uh, my father, Bishop Hammond, has spoken so much about not only the power of revelation, the key and the need of revelation in the church. And we would live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we love the prophetic. We have promoted the prophetic. We believe in that power and that release and being needed in the church today. But the spirit of wisdom is also so key. And really, that is the context that revelation flows to bring edification, as scripture describes. And so really, uh, what our heart is and what I know my dad has written so many books and the reason why about the prophetic is to see it put in that context of protocol, wisdom. It says there's great wisdom and counsel. There's wisdom in being uh, under proper oversight. Those that have been in the ministry for many decades and have pioneered and pressed the battle and been the promoters, but yet also trying to guard in a way that would say wisdom is so important in how we operate. So uh, those two working hand in hand, the apostolic wisdom, prophetic revelation when they co-labor uh, they build the foundation of the church they cause us to be what god has in mind we believe god has great things in mind for this time we believe in revival and awakening and uh, god wants to restore righteous foundations and lands he wants to impart his heart and restore worship toward him and we believe god's on the move we're seeing it on college campuses we're seeing it around the world there's already the the embers are, are being flamed up and you're seeing amazing things take place but we don't want to see things diverted or perverted from that purpose. And uh, that's why we felt like it was important to say something about these words because they felt like they were in a stark contrast to what God was trying to do and to try to dampen actually the reality of what we see taking place. And uh, so we're, we're just trying to be a counterbalance of wisdom and the voice of the Lord that people can look to and maybe receive <clears throat> that download that would help them, as my dad said, uh, to righteously judge things out of that heart of wisdom. Amen. I just would just add that, you know, Isaiah chapter 10, verse one says, woe to those who decree unrighteous decree. We're not decrees. We're not trying to speak woe to this to this minister who all of us really, truly love. Uh, but we are wanting to say woe to these words that have been spoken and uh, and that we understand the force of words, the power of words. And that is why we are taking this time to actually condemn these words and call them false because we don't want to give any power to them. And we want to break any kind of curse that's been released in the realm of the spirit. Prophecy is redemptive. And I believe that anytime we may see something and, and people on this council at times see things that are negative, that are perhaps within the, the plan or the strategy of the enemy, and our call is always for intercession. And we can even see a true word was given of judgment in the days of Jonah and Nineveh. And yet the people of God prayed and they repented and God's hand was stayed. We do not believe these are true words, but we're saying that even in the case of true words, when God is saying something that's very serious, there is always a place of prayer, of repentance, and of turning. And we see that evidenced in scripture. And so prophecy should have a redemptive um, uh, impact on the people that hear it. And these words really don't meet that criteria, which is why we've had to label them as false. James Gall? Uh, yes. Uh, in this particular council, one of the attributes is that we look for the redemptive purpose of God. And so we do believe, as the Hammonds and as Cindy has already articulated, is that we bring in the place of prayer. These words, which we have all viewed and, re and reviewed, do not at all bring in a call to prayer. 
they do not bring in a call to repentance, and they do not bring in hope. True prophetic words, true prophetic words are invitations from the Holy Spirit, even if they're, now please listen, hard words. Mm -hmm. We each all know, not the gift of prophecy, but prophets, there's a difference mm -hmm. at times. Yeah have to release hard words but hard words in with a mature cuz there's a difference between an immature prophet and a mature prophet mm -hmm. that they learn to bring in the invitation of God now let us reason together if my people will humble themselves, will seek my face, will confess their sin, there is none of this that is in the presentation. And so we are therefore saying that we believe that there must be an invitation into repentance. There must be a call into the redemptive purpose of God. And so perhaps this could also, though, be redemptively a call to some of us to fill in a gap of the need for even more teaching and equipping because there's so many hungry people out there. So as we look at this, we also see that there is some need that needs to be filled. There is some need for proper grounding. There is some need for the banks to be properly put in place for the river. Because if we do not put it in place again, hungry people will simply gravitate to that, or a person who has a magnetic or a personality that they are drawn to. We must present the gift with the Word of God, centered in the will of God, in the ways of God. And that is what we are trying to re- call the bar up higher. We are not going to lower the bar. We are going to keep it high in these days because that is important for the move of God and for each of our lives. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Clare. Thank you, Cindy. You know, we know that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Amen. We, we know that Paul, Paul the Apostle said, bless and curse not. And some of these words sound to my ears more like curses than prophetic words from the heart of Jesus, which is what's so concerning. You know, there's a lot of room, and I want to say this. People need to hear this. There's a lot of room for different styles, different cultures whether the prophetic movement, there's a lot of different streams, a lot of different expressions. That's beautiful. Ezekiel wasn't like Moses. Elijah wasn't like Daniel. But here's the thing. The heart of God doesn't change toward his people, toward people. Jesus is our prototype prophet. And some of these prophecies, especially the ones regarding judgment on the church, seem to be partnering with the accuser of the brethren. Jesus loves his bride. And yes, he did send the seven letters to the churches in the book of Revelation. But even then, he affirmed them in the front. I see your love. I see your service. I see your works. Uh, I have this against you. But if you'll per, you know, contend to the end, you'll receive the crown of life, this, that, and the other. So you know, Jesus' rebuke was sandwiched between affirmations and promises of reward. Um, I also feel like when we're releasing hard words, and I have 
had the unfortunate pleasure of doing that. It's not often, but I do so with the fear and trembling of the Lord, with the heart broken for the people of God, for the people to whom the prophecy is directed. And I don't see in these prophetic words redemption, as others have mentioned. God is love. He's not a harsh God. He's not the author of confusion. He's not trying to divide his church. He himself said, a house divided shall not stand. A house divided against each other cannot stand. And I'm very concerned that many people in the younger generation that we're so all committed to raising up as pure prophetic voices are seeing a wrong representation of New Testament prophetic ministry. We are under a different covenant. That doesn't mean there's not judgment, but it's a different it's a different covenant. We're in a different age. You know, Bill Johnson said uh, this to me one time. I was in his studios, and he said, you know, where hope is absent, there's an enemy in the mix somewhere. And these words, they're hopeless. They're disturbing. They breed fear and confusion. I've seen so many people very upset. They don't know what to believe. Uh, and I agree, and I stand with the others here. This, These words have to be condemned. We're not condemning a person. We're condemning these prophetic utterances in hope. Uh, that this person will turn and mm -hmm. uh, find, uh, you know, find, reestablish, uh, you know, the truth. That's a very important point. This is not a vindictive thing. Uh, this is hoping that this this leader will will, you know, go back and say, "Look, I I I want to retract that. I should not have done that. I should have gotten it." Um, judged by uh, leaders in in the nations, uh, I I I should I released it presumptively is what I could say. It doesn't mean that we're saying this person is a false prophet, but this is very very serious. Nor are we saying that we think Trump is an angel or perfect, you know. But we do believe that policy matters, and what we're seeing, if we pray. I mean, things could could go south, could be, you know, very difficult. So we must pray. We may have to, we're praying harder than we were before. And so we have to pray and we ask, please, whatever nation you're in, please pray for us also. Pray that the wars will end. Pray that, that there will be solutions for the economies to be healed, that the poor will be able to buy their food, that the inflation will come down. It's very disturbing to see what has happened to people uh, on fixed incomes and many things like this. We're very concerned about these things. And we have uh, three other on the line. Uh, on the, uh, I don't know. Uh, Herman, do you want to share anything at this time, Herman Martyr? He may be muted. We'll go on. Michelle, do you have anything you want to share? Or Mark, any of you? I just agree um, wholeheartedly for the sake of the next generation and to raise up pure prophetic voices. So I have nothing to add. I'm in agreement. Pastor Michelle Jackson is one of our prophets. In fact, when her daddy, Bishop Harry Jackson, went home to be with the Lord, we were honored to have her join our midst. And so, Mark, uh, Herman, do you have anything that you want to add to this? Maybe they don't. You know? Yes. Well, yes, yes Cindy, we're, we're in complete agreement. Um, and especially because, uh, you know, most words, even if true, uh, are always conditional. Right. God always gives uh, that redemptive clause in there that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And we've shared those, you know, uh, those words already. And, and especially coming from a time where we've had literally nation upon nation praying for America coming through these elections. Uh, there's been so many, so much prayer that's happened in the last uh, I won't even go 90 days in the last 30 days uh, for the nation and things. Uh, we know that God is listening to the prayers of his people. And so when you get these kind of words uh, that need to be checked and even uh, nullified in the spirit. And this is why we we're here today, uh, not lightly, but in the fear of the Lord, because we are praying for America. And we and, and we know that we're in tumultuous days. 
uh, but that God has a way out because he's listening to the prayers of his people. And, and we're going to continue uh, to to wrestle uh, that God w with God for the blessing of the Lord to come upon this nation and for God to use all those in leadership, not just Donald Trump. And, and so from that standpoint, we do not hold... Um, Donald Trump as savior of America. He's just the president. And and, and because of that, we're going to continue to just uh, pray and seek the face of God and knowing that we're in a new day, a new turning, uh, and things will turn. Uh, we don't, God hasn't given us any specific dates, but we know that the best days of America are still ahead of her, not behind her. And there's an awakening and a revival coming. And this is why uh, we're taking this step now here together as a council to uh, bring that redemptive peace uh, to this and to the nations. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just looking. We're going to be posting along with these this video the names of people that have signed. Uh, there's 48 of them. I'll just read a few here. Uh, uh, Bishop Joseph Garlington, Sharon Stone uh, Black and Greg Black, Cheon, Chuck Pierce, Dutch Sheets, Barbara Yoder, Lance Walnow, Ken Fish, Patricia King, Todd White, and we could go on and on and on. Arlene Westerhoff, Stacey Campbell, uh, Larry Sparks, many leaders here. And so we have taken quite a long time to have these words looked at and judged. And again, please, we do not take this lightly. But we are in hopes that this will actually cause a turnaround. And we are praying for that and we're believing for that. Uh, uh, Bishop Hammond, you have a book. Is it the 10 M's? Of how, which one is it talks about maturity and character in the prophet? Uh, well, I've got one on how can these things be. It talks about how false doctrine and how to handle false prophecy and all that. And then my book on prophets and personal prophecy. Not, no, no, the third, the third book, Prophets, Pitfalls to Avoid, Principles mm -hmm. of Practice. And I just did a whole year of series teaching on that and um, made a legacy series on it. But there's so much to prophecy and fulfillment and people and things that, that we need to educate the world. And that's what I've been doing. But when, when God called me to help father the prophetic movement, I, I said, well, uh, what do I do? He says, he says, Give them information. So I started writing the book, Prophet and Personal Prophecy, that prophets and prophetic movement, prophets, pitfalls to avoid, principles of practice, then apostle prophets, coming moves of God. And then I wrote the book on uh, how can these things be? And I show how every false uh, teaching arose within uh, the church and how it goes and how you determine whether you're, you're following something that's going to turn false or true. And, and there's so much that the people need to know and understand and just i'd say 90 percent of christians know hardly anything about prophecy or how it works or how it does and even among pentecostals are not that much knowledge on it it's and even those among charismatic they're, they're still not a regular. so we who are prophetic and have been in it for years and have gone through it and you know and let me just conclude with saying this uh, I just celebrated my 70, 90, and 70 years of living, 90, I mean, 90 years of living, 70 years of ministry, and I've lived through about five or six presidents, and I don't remember any president asking for prayer, having people pray for him, and uh, promoting Christianity as much as uh, uh, um, Trump. Trump, Trump has, and uh, uh, people that don't know him don't realize that uh, he's had a lot of prophecies. He had the church pray for him the other day, and they prophesied to him, they ministered to him, and he, he receives it. And, and he's done more for the church than any president that we've had. It's like he did more for Israel than any president we've had. He, and so to t say that he's a scoundrel like they did, uh, and he's going to be bad for it, and he's going to bring judgment on it, uh, it just doesn't fit with the facts. You know, I think, Cindy, that our heart as a council really is uh in everything we've done is god we want america and every nation as prophets to the nations we believe are still valid to turn 
to God, people to turn to God in that nation and for nations to align to God's purposes. And so our cry is always, Lord, as it was there in Chronicles, heal our land. And I think that's really why we'd even address an issue like this is that I believe this uh, rather infects uh, and inflames uh, a wound that's already there. And we're trying to say, no, I think God really does want to heal the land of America, wants to heal the land uh, of nations that are crying out to him. And when we seek his face, when we turn from wicked ways, when we cry out to him, he does hear. And when he hears, he can heal. And so we're just praying together that God will bring that kind of grace upon America. God bless America. It's not a statement of pride. It's a statement of petition. Lord, we need you. We can't be great without you. We'll never achieve anything good without you, God. If you don't come and re revive us again and touch our life and our land, we're in trouble. And we need God in America as much now as ever. And so uh, that's true of the nations of the earth. And we believe much given, much required. America has been given a lot. So we have a high requirement. And sometimes we have failed. But we're just saying, God, help us to step up to the high calling that we can fulfill for you. And that's really, uh, I believe, what our cry is today. And we're just believing that there can be a unity in the body of Christ and a strength that God can bless us in ways that only he can and that any assignment of the enemy to divide and conquer in the church will not work and that we will be a house that will stand and bless not only uh, God through our words and how we operate, but also hopefully be a blessing in the nations of the earth. Well, thank you. I think that's a good conclusion statement. I know we've been on a long time. For those of you who have uh, been with us through the whole thing, uh, thank you. We appreciate your prayers. And uh, we're asking wherever you're watching the, from uh, to, to pray, pray for the church, um, pray if you're from another nation. We think of the millions of people we've heard from, literally that have prayed around the world for the U.S. And, and we, we want God to bless. We know that we're an imperfect nation. There's many things we've done that are imperfect and even sinful but we are praying for a new day and we are seeing revival across this whole nation. I mean, we are seeing it on campus after campus. 12,000 were baptized on Pentecost Sunday off the coast of California. We are in a move of God and we are thankful. Well, thank you all for joining us and we so appreciate you. God bless you. Amen. Bless you.